Hi everyone, you're listening to Fantasia, the talk show. This is a YouTube exclusive. I'm with the directors and screenwriters of Freaks, Zach Lipovsky and Adam Stein. Thank you guys Hi. for coming hey. to the show. Thank, Thank you for having so, us. We're so glad to be in your cabin in the middle of the woods. Do here. you love it? Yeah. yeah, it's very creepy. Put on the vibe. It's a, a wing, wing What happens vibe. in this place at night? Oh, a lot of stuff. Yeah. There's a legend, actually, there's a ghost here. Mm. I personally don't believe it. Mm. Most of those guys do. Right. I think they're full of it, though. Maybe but, they are mm. all ghosts. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe we, it's all the ghosts. <laughs> it's all ghosts. Uh, let's talk about your movie, Freaks, that's going to be shown tonight uh, at Fantasia. Uh, it's strange because I don't want to reveal too much about it, but at the same, thing, at the same time, we need to talk about it. Yeah. Could you like explain the origin of the project? Sure. Because you both directed it, but you both mm -hmm. wrote it also. Well, first about the film, the way we usually talk about it is... We say it's a sci-fi thriller about a little seven-year-old girl who's mm -hmm. trapped in this house by her father, yeah. who's telling her not to go outside or even look outside because we'll both be killed. Mm -hmm. And there's a creepy ice cream truck that goes by the house trying to convince her to come outside. A very creepy ice cream <laughs> truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The ice cream truck driver uh, is named Mr. Snow Cone, played by Bruce Dern. He's amazing. And uh, 20 minutes in, she gets up the courage to escape and mm -hmm. defy her father and she realizes he was telling the truth. That's the thing I, I liked about the movie. Usually it's the ending of that kind of movies, you know? But this <laughs> yeah. is not even the af the, right. the world gets bigger after Yeah, when the movie starts you kind of think, okay, this is probably one of these movies that they're in the house the whole movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which we wanted you to feel because she's been trapped in this house. Uh, so that when she finally leaves, you feel that feeling of, ah! Like, you're getting that feeling of escaping, which is really cool. And then as soon as she leaves, you're, you get this feeling of like, go back in the house, go back in the house. Yes, don't open the door anymore. <laughs> we, wanted, we wanted to kind of, uh, we wanted to constantly surprise the audience mm -hmm. and keep them guessing. So if you start the movie thinking, oh, this is one of those movies where there's a kid trapped inside a house, the whole movie. But then she leaves 20 minutes in, mm -hmm. you really, at sea, you don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah, and you lose all your guides. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And the the main the main actress, the, the little girl who plays Chloe, I think her name is Lexi Kolker. Yeah, Kolker. Lexi. She's Kolker. amazing. Was it hard to direct a child because there's other subtleties in the movie? I was wondering what she get yeah. it or. Yeah, and the movie, she's in every scene in the movie. Yeah. She's in control of every scene in the movie. Mm -hmm. She's very much a powerful uh, character and, and actress. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff with kids. Um, we've done a lot of stuff with Disney and stuff where it's a lot more sort of Disney. Yeah, happy, and so, lucky, <laughs> happy yeah. times. Yeah. This movie is very intense. Very, it's, it's definitely a thriller. Mm -hmm. um, and so we wanted to approach the way that we did the acting with her very differently. So mm -hmm. instead of kids are usually not very real because they they rehearse and they memorize and they memorize because they don't want to get it wrong. It's yeah. like a test. Yeah. But then they kind of forget the meaning. So we did a lot of work with her to try and make sure that we connected to real emotions. We didn't have her memorize. We just had her sort of know basically what the scene was about. Did she had like a night, a night line for the, the scenes? Yeah, we she, would just give her the she, scenes she, and she, she would, would read, read them, them, but not memorize the lines. Okay. So that we could just come, she could come to set and we could, you know, start it with her real experience of the moment mm -hmm. rather than memorizing every word. Did any uh, dialogue or scene that snuck in because she oh, was yeah. improvising? The way? movie, yeah. we definitely, Filled the movie with a lot of, especially with Bruce Dern, who's known yeah. for improvising. Mm -hmm. um, and Emile's, uh, Emil Hirsch is in it as well, and he's incredibly good. And we just wanted all the actors to live in the moment. Mm -hmm. And we were the writers, so we could always throw out the script. Adjust, or yeah. when they were just improvising and it was going nowhere, we could remind them of where to go again. So it was helpful to be both the writers and directors. Um, there's powers in the movie. There's yeah, the things software. happen. Things happen. <laughs> I think one of the I'm a huge X Men fan, and when I saw the poster, I was like, okay, there's something about that. Right. I was thinking of the X Men, but was it hard not to get uh, too much associated to, to the X Men franchise and the mutant powers and everything because it's such a known sure. franchise? Yeah. One one starting point we had was um, we didn't want there to be any superheroes mm -hmm. in this world. Um, we were initially inspired by there was there's this podcast in the U.S. called This American Life, mm -hmm. um, and uh, John, the comedian John Hodgman, did one episode where he interviewed people saying, "If you had superpowers, what would you do with them?" And you know, people said things like, "Oh, I would fly to Paris," or "Oh, I'd go invisible and spy on my ex." Um, <laughs> Wait, that's creepy. And, yeah. and and at the end of the episode, he said, "You know what? No one said. No one said I would save people or 
fight crime. <laughs> yeah. Not a single person. Yeah, if you want to get just, rich, they yeah, want to stalk they, their Well, they just want to do things for themselves. Yeah. And, and so we, we really started at a place like, okay, in this world, there might be super abilities, but no one is a hero mm -hmm. and no one is a villain. They're just regular people trying to survive and do what, what they need to do. Is it a start starting point for a franchise? Franchise because in my head there's like so many stories you can tell in this universe. Yeah. Is it something you're? The movie up? definitely f feels like this small slice of a much bigger world, yeah. and we we would love to explore that. And it's really up to people coming to see the movie. If uh -huh. it goes out in theaters and nobody goes to see it, then <laughs> mm -hmm. that's the last story. <laughs> so we really want lots of people to spread the word about it. And um, it's been traveling to film festivals all around the world and winning Audience Choice Awards. And it's, it's a really fun movie. And we just hope that when it comes out in theaters later this summer, that uh, everyone shows up. It's, a, it's not a superhero movie, but it's really grounded in real life. That's one of the main yeah. take I got from watching the movie. Were you, were you scared that putting effect into this, this universe that would take up like the human element of, out of it? Well, we tried to make sure all the visual effects felt like a camera just happened to shoot them. Like mm -hmm. they were all, there was no, there's no CG, there's no worlds you've never seen before. It's very, mm -hmm. everything, all the visual effects that are in it are, were basically things that you could photograph and then manipulate so that it felt hmm. very real because yeah. we wanted, we wanted the film, you know, you're saying how it has elements of X-Men, but most of the movies that we watched were like Room and Beast of the Southern Wild mm -hmm. and Florida Project and movies oh, that were like grounded character pieces with kids. And so we wanted any visual effects, we wanted to take that tone and apply it to a sci-fi thing. So the visual effects needed to feel like they could be in Room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it had to I feel like that. Thanks, guys, for coming to the show. Yeah. Uh, Zach Lipovsky and Adam Steins, the co-director and co-writer of Freaks, Go see it if you have the chance. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>Happy because so many of the festivals we screened at were full of stress like when we were at TIFF it was all about selling the film and what will people think and now just being here at Fantasia is just full of, full of joy and like enjoyment when you write the movie in a coffee shop with your friend you you hope that one day the movie might get made you don't even imagine that at one point anyone will even see it never mind like it never mind line up for an hour around the block. So yeah. to have hundreds of people line up to come see the movie is sort of mind-blowing. <laughs>